Hey y'all, it's Bo Brotherton with Better Together Life. I have talked so much about the importance of raising rabbits on a homestead, especially if it's a brand new homestead, because you need to build up the microbiology, all of the awesomeness of the soil on a brand new homestead, and no animal does that better than rabbits, especially in a small scale garden. And today what I'm going to be telling you is a new trick that I have actually learned on how to supercharge your rabbit poop with biochar. So you all know that I love raising rabbits on a homestead because of their rabbit poop. And what I have always done is just to take the rabbit poop and put some in our garden and then whenever I've run out of space in our garden because you get a lot of poop then I will take the access of that and put it into our compost bin and then that kind of makes it just a little bit better but today we're talking about how to supercharge your rabbit poop and if you want to be super cool remember to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm so we're talking about rabbit poop and then biochar these are the two things we're going to learn Let's first go over why rabbit poop is so good. All right, I'm gonna give you all some resources that you can go and read these articles yourself. You can listen to other experts in the homesteading community. So I'll put the link to these articles down in the description below. According to gardeningknowhow.com, the reason why rabbit manure is so good is that rabbit dung is dry, odorless, and in pellet form, making it suitable for direct use in the garden. Since rabbit dung, breaks down quickly there is usually little threat of burning the roots of the plant i honestly have never seen any kind of burning because it's a cold manure rabbit manure fertilizer is rich in nitrogen and phosphorus nutrients that plants need for healthy growth okay so there you go nitrogen and phosphorus you need that now what we're going to be talking about is what is biochar the article I'm talking about is from story.com, again, link below. So what they're saying is that biochar is a housing complex for microbes. They're saying that the combustion while you're making biochar is reduced by restricting airflow to the organic matter once it is actively burning. Heating the feedstock with very little air roasts it rather than burns it preserving the structure of the material down to microscopic levels. So that's what I've said many times in the past is that biochar has like these microscopic layers and like all this good stuff in there. And so if you look at a microscope, you would see a fragment of biochar made from the wood and it is porous and consists of empty chambers. That's what we want. These chambers are remnants of the xylem and phloem vessels. I don't know what that is. The channels by which once living plants took up and delivered water and nutrients to the leaves. So that's like the plants. Sorry, that's that totally glossed over whenever I was reading it. What they're saying is that that is all the layers of the feedstock because you're creating biochar from plants, from woody plants and leaves and all the good stuff, the wood. Those are plants. You're trying to feed plants with plants. So all those layers, that's part of the plant. So that's good. So among these now empty tubulars are large spaces. These rooms are absorbent, holding water, oils, sugars, proteins, and other substances produced by the beneficial soil microbes that occupy them. These interior spaces also provide safe hiding places for these microbes to do so much of the work to feed and support the health of the plants with which they are growing. You guys, rabbit poop, when it falls on the ground and able to get in contact with the ground, that's one reason why I kind of like having my rabbit poop just fall on the ground and just scoop it up with a shovel. I am creating my own compost bin here in the soil. Worms are able to get up in there. I, mean, I right now have chickens in here, it's kind of funny. Uh, and they're able to kind of mix it up for me. So all of those beneficial microbes that come 
to the rabbit poop. They find homes within all the empty vessels and all the little microscopic chambers of the biochar. They find their homes. This is how you can supercharge your rabbit poop is by putting biochar in with your rabbit poop. So that's basically what I do now. Whenever I have brush that I need to clear because I have about 60% wooded here on my seven acre property, I burn that brush down to a small amount of biochar. Then I take that biochar and I put it underneath the rabbits. The rabbits pee and poop on it, creating this supercharged mass of nutrients. And then I mix it up a little bit. I'll let the chickens come in here and stir it up for me. Then I take this and I go put it on my garden. I take this and I go put it on my pastures. I spread it on my pastures to grow the soil, to grow all of the goodness that I want here on my property. I am not a rabbit farmer. I am not a chicken farmer. I'm not a pig farmer. If I get sheep and cows, I will not be a sheep and cattle farmer. I am a soil farmer. That is my number one thing here on my property is to increase the biology of my soil because I want food. You got to have the microbiome of the soil in order to improve the microbiome of your body getting good nutrient dense food. So how can you do this uh, on your property in broad scale acreage? Well, you can do it like I do. I just call my county and I ask to do a burn pile. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I was just calling to double check and make sure that, is there a burn ban going on? Uh, no, there's not. I just need to know the location where you're burning. Yes, ma'am. Okay, what is your name? Bo Brotherton. Brotherton? Yes, brother like sister, then T-O-N. Okay, just make sure it's out an hour before dark. Thank you so All much. All right, sounds good. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, you don't do that in suburbia. It's just it's a different thing in suburbia. So in suburbia, you get rabbits, right? Like, we've already talked about that. This guy is super duper sweet. Like... Yeah, he's big but sweet. So this is a really good start for us to have a nice bunny. Nice big boy bunny to breed so that we can learn how to breed. So and I need to tell you guys something. I do not know what to breed me. Then if you have, you know, you find some brush on the side of the road from like a land clearing or something like that. So if it's just brush, like someone cleared some stuff and put it out on the curb for the trash service to pick up, ask them if you can take that. Throw it in a truck or get a trailer or somehow get some of that woody material. Take it to your house. Get a, some kind of like a, a backyard, you know, a little fire pit and create a burn pile. Burn from the top so you can get some dryer lint. And instead of trying to burn from the bottom, you burn from the top, put the dryer lint on the top and let it burn down top to bottom. Once it starts getting to where you can see it starts smoldering, getting to charcoal form, just spray that down. Don't let it all turn to ash because that's what you want. You want that charcoal. Once you spray it all down, let it sit for a little bit. Take that biochar, all those charcoals, that is now biochar, and put it underneath the rabbits or mix it in, whatever you're doing with your rabbit poop, mix it in with the rabbit manure, and bam, you have supercharged your rabbit poop. You've already jump-started the biochar to be able to get all the biology into those chambers, into those vessels of the charcoal, and then you can take that and put it in your garden. If you wanna compost it, you can, but this stuff all can just go straight into your garden. I love this. And here's the deal, this is not my idea. Someone gave me this idea in a comment. I'll try to find it and I'll try to put his name right here. All right, I'm editing the video right now and I found uh, the guy who told me this idea. Also, I am rocking the hat hair. Just gotta get this video done. 
So this is an idea from James P. in the comments. I think he did it on our six reasons why rabbits should be your first animal on a homestead. So I'll put that video up there. So in this comment thread that he gave, a lot of people asked like, hey James, what is biochar? So I'm just the kind of person that I see something, it makes sense to me, and I just do it. I just do it. I'm not a researcher. I'm definitely a shotgun personality. I just go for it. It just always made sense, the usefulness of biochar, once I understood that microbes, basically it gives microbes a place to live. But James kind of explains it a little bit better. He says, there's lots of information and videos out there, but the quick is that it is charcoal that has microbes in it. Charcoal is very porous and gives them a place to live. These pores also hold water and nutrients as well. Yep. So it helps hold the nutrients and water, which makes an ideal place for fungi, bacteria, and other good guys. And then when the soil dries out, the biochar allows these guys to survive, like in a long-term drought, whenever you haven't watered or just hasn't rained in a while. Because it is carbon only, the soil dwellers do not break it down quickly. Compost has a half-life of just about a few years and biochar has a half-life of up to 1,000 years. Over 1,000 years, holy moly, James. So, <laughs> if you get it in your soil, it is a long time benefit. That's super cool, I didn't know that. Longer than you will be around, wow. Okay, so this is one thing I'm sort of curious. Maybe, I don't know, does that mean that it, if it doesn't break down, does that mean that it's really good? Like, is there a limit of how much you should put on there? That kind of makes me think a little bit. I don't know. Um, I don't have time to do the research before I post this video. But if you know, put it down in the comments below of if there a limit of how much biochar you could have in a garden or in a pasture. And then James says to look up terra preta as well. It is a biochar enriched soil. I think that comes from the Amazon. Like this is where this whole biochar thing comes from. This is a really cool thread. If you want to go and find this, there's like a ton of comments on there. Really neat. Again, it's in the six reasons why you should raise rabbits video. This is rad. But thank you, thank you, thank you for giving us this idea. I can't believe that I wasted four years of raising rabbits and never thought about bringing these two together at the beginning stage because I would just put them together in the garden, but I could do it right now and get a jump start on getting all of this going because this is where all of the great nutrient building biology is happening is right here underneath the rabbit hutch. I love rabbits. Can you tell that I really love rabbits and why I think every homesteader should have rabbits? Have I ever told you that I think that you should only eat rabbit? No, I've never said that you should only eat rabbit. That would be idiotic. I don't wanna hear any more comments about stupid rabbit starvation. What person would only eat rabbit in their diet? That is so insane. You need rabbits for multiple, it's like the best function stacking animal on the homestead. Love rabbits. Put biochar with your rabbit poop. It's gonna be great. Oh, I'm stuck. I can't stand up. My feet are asleep. I need a better tripod that's taller.